With many fishery stocks around the world in trouble, more and more scientists and policy experts are talking about protecting parts of the oceans with marine protected areas. One of the major tools that will help to both protect stocks as well as rebuild depleted stocks will be fully protected marine reserves. They do benefit the fisheries. It's not only that they benefit the animals in a sense that they allow the, the continued so existence, but that's the benefit the fisheries you end up catching more. Properly designed marine protected areas are part of fisheries management, that fishermen should help design them, they should understand why they're being developed, what the hypotheses are in terms of increasing fish production or creating refuges for larger fish that would then uh, export their juveniles out into non-protected areas for fisheries. I think fishermen, this is part of the learning curve for the fishing community, is to learn how could marine protected areas be designed in ways that will help them as well as others. Marine protected areas, or MPAs, are areas of the marine environment that have been legally designated for conservation purposes. There are several types of MPAs, from fully protected reserves to others that allow for multiple uses, including commercial and recreational fishing. Dr. Astrid Schultz is an economist and the vice president of knowledge systems at Ecotrust. Globally, there is a, a, a consensus that has emerged that uh, it makes sense to set aside 20 to 30 percent of the world's oceans in permanently protected areas. And, and that, that's sort of what's needed to rebuild um, fish stocks and, and other organisms and, and preserve marine biodiversity. The consensus is there. And then the question is, well, how do you now go in and implement all these marine protected areas? What we see is that currently the rate of implementation it's just nowhere near where it needs to be. And our analysis of what's going on is that um, a lot of these MPA, marine protected area planning processes, don't pay attention enough to the socioeconomic dimension. According to the World Bank, a fundamental predictor of MPA success is stakeholder participation in the design and implementation. And the International Union for Conservation of Nature says Local people must be deeply involved from the earliest possible stage in any MPA that is to succeed. Here in the United States, the federal agency that is in charge of managing uh, fisheries, uh, the National Marine Fisheries Service, employs 3,000 people. And only 30 of those people are economists and other social scientists. And that right there tells you everything you need to know about what's challenging about fisheries management because these agencies are staffed by people that know fish, but really what you're doing is you're not telling the fish where they can swim or what they can do in the ocean, you're telling people what they can do in the ocean. And so um, a lot of fishermen, both in federal and, and state um, fishery management processes, feel really disenfranchised. You know, many fishermen feel every time they've tried to cooperate in giving out information, there's never been a positive. Any, anybody that goes out on the water with a boat, uh, they have their own spots. They may share them in their own group, but they don't, there's a big fear that if you step up and you tell people where you fish, that's what they're gonna close. Fishermen may be skeptical about mapping and not wanting to give up local information, and everybody understands that, but there can easily be a process in place that makes this confidential and the information can be held very closely. Ecotrust faced a challenge. How could we help agencies and managers bring fishermen and other stakeholders together in a marine planning process? Charles Steinbach is director of marine planning at Ecotrust. Asking a fisherman where they fish is very difficult. And um, often, you know, you're, you're sitting in a coffee shop with them for like two, three plus hours where they're just, you know, they want to talk about everything else but actually where they fish. A major project for Ecotrust has been work with California's Marine Life Protection Act Initiative, or MLPA. Ecotrust had a, had a tremendous role in, in, in breaking down those barriers with honest, transparent information and the real desire to help. To me, the, the real innovative um, approach that Ecotrust used in this work was to combine both um, kind of the more traditional quantitative um, investigation where they looked at landing receipts and, and revenue, etc., 
but also um, integrating into that a more qualitative approach. And that was really working with the fishing community, the fishermen in this working group, uh, interviewing them and, and using their local knowledge, their expertise, and combining that with the, the more quantitative data, the numbers, to come up with, with the final product. When it comes to natural resource policy and planning, you absolutely need the right people in the room and you need the right organizations in the room. These tools will help us to sit with the, the stakeholders, including the government, and start negotiations with them. But it's not only the government, it's all the stakeholders. The first tool that EcoTrust developed was Open Ocean Map. Open Ocean Map is used to create a map of preferred fishing grounds based on local knowledge. Fishermen are given an imaginary bag of 100 pennies. They're asked to use those pennies in order to assign value to areas of the marine environment. Data collected from the fishermen are then aggregated onto a series of maps. With Open Ocean Map for collecting local knowledge, the next challenge became comparing fishermen's social and economic data to habitat information. That's the job of Marine Map, a decision support tool developed by EcoTrust in partnership with the Nature Conservancy and the University of California at Santa Barbara. Dr. Will McClintock is a marine biologist and heads the Marine Map Consortium based at UC Santa Barbara. Marine Map is a, is a web-based decision support tool that is designed specifically for non-technical users and non-scientists to make science-based decisions about where to put marine protected areas in and along the coast of California. When Marine Map is projected on a screen at a stakeholder meeting, all the focus is on capturing people's ideas and providing them real-time feedback about how their prospective MPAs their concepts of where MPA should go, will do at capturing key habitats and minimizing socioeconomic impacts. Now EcoTrust is working on a new tool called Eureka, which enables managers to assess MPAs by comparing data from inside and outside of a protected area. Eureka is a software to enter information that is obtained from subtitle monitoring in and out of marine reserves. With successful marine spatial planning projects from Alaska to Mexico, EcoTrust is positioned to help partners around the world use the Ocean Toolkit. I think this type of work can be exported wherever you want to look at um, marine zoning or spatial use in the ocean. We are producing new software that is open to anyone. And because it's open source, someone take that information, that, that, take that software and change and, and make it much better. So it's a, a learning community. Any, any community or fishermen that are engaged in planning in the territorial sea could find a great use for this information. You need to understand what you have and where it's at to be able to have a conversation about where you want to then put things in the future. Creating opportunities for conservation based on scientific data has been the key to EcoTrust's work. I think we were able to develop a relationship with the fishing community where um, they trusted the science that EcoTrust was producing. And I think that was a, a unique relationship. And, and I think uh, more and more, this is the way to do business. Most fishermen have become very environmentally conscious in the last 20 years. Uh, the world's changed and, uh, the, and fishing's changed. And, Fishermen have had to learn to become scientists, politicians. I, I gotta tell you, I think EcoTrust is really terrific. I'm, the people that work there are the smartest, brightest, most dedicated people. To see the, the positive spirit uh, and the entrepreneurial and innovative spirit that, that comes from EcoTrust, trying to figure out how to make it work and do it right. The whole reason we're doing this, um, setting aside protected areas in the ocean, just like we do in land, is for the future. Uh, EcoTrust for 20 years has been trying to create tools that in effect improve decision making to uh, improve social, environmental, and economic well-being together all at once. So that this, um, these tools are, are applicable in the ocean, they're applicable on land, they're applicable in forestry and food and farms and in fisheries and um, can be used not just here of course but can be used all over the world.